Hello everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to my channel and if you like, click the like button and please subscribe. It does help my channel out a whole bunch and I appreciate it very, very much. Yes, I do. Uh, this is a very sad deal here with my first article and um, this was uh, published uh, October the 15th of 22. It's the Washika Christmas Parade Killer mocks court and victims while representing himself at his own trial. You talk about a oh, unforgivable. Unforgivable. The trial of the man accused of killing six people and wounding many more by intentionally driving an SUV through innocent attendees of last year's Christmas parade in Washika, Wisconsin is continuing this week. Daryl Brooks, 40 years old, is representing himself after firing the public defenders who had been representing him and went on nearly an hour-long rant in court on Thursday, which he demanded the judge dismiss the, the press, uh, prosecution against him. Uh, he has no legal training or education and has repeatedly disrupted the trial the trial with outlandish and disruptive behavior. Brooks demanded the judge present to him the injured party. I mean, he killed six people, and that included a little boy. And he wants the judge to present them, the ones he injured. Oh, well, some might have survived. They could have done that, I suppose. But six lost their lives because of his brainless action. Can anyone, can anyone make a claim against me? Can you make a claim against me, Your Honor? He said that his motion is to dismiss the case against him uh, should be granted on that alone. He said that because he argues that there is no injury party injured party. There is no one to make a claim. Maybe there wasn't anybody injured then. Just the poor ones that lost their lives and that poor little boy. Right at Christmas time. Brooks argued to Judge Jennifer Durow that his constitutional right to a speedy trial has been violated. At the same time he demanded the trial be transferred out of Wanashika County because of his claim of juror bias. He belligerently told Judge Duro that this was treason for her, not to uphold her oath of office to protect him and his uh, claim to his uh, constitutional rights. Huh. Can you picture that? He claims his constitutional rights. The juror in the case was excused to the jury room before Brooks began his rant against the court and the victims he killed. And there's a video to this if you all would like to go see it and just uh, type in Washika Christmas Massacre or whatever and Daryl Brooks is a prisoner. That ain't all. The state is submitting evidence that Brooks drove his Red Ford Escape into the parade crowd on November 21st, running over and ramming dozen of people. So there had to be some injured. The six people he killed included an eight-year-old boy. He is charged with 76 crimes, including six counts of first-degree intentional homicide. Brooks gave an interview uh, last year, soon after the incident, in which he complained that he was being dehumanized and demonized demonized after his arrest. Well, he's got a demon in him, all right. His criminal record before the parade killings fi filled 50 pages and included violent crimes against his family and number of female acquaintances. So if he had this record, now you tell me, what's wrong with the law? I mean, after one, two, or three times he was pulled in for maybe abusing his girlfriends. 
or breaking a robbery or beating up somebody. They didn't know he wasn't... Mm -hmm. Oh, come on now, people. Come on. And against his own family? What was wrong with the law? And he was out free? <clears throat> oh, well. Uh. Sometimes you just got to let it go. There's a song like that, just let it go. My goodness, my gosh. And, uh, let's see. Let's do this one here. Now, this is a second try on this video. And I took a couple art articles out that were very, very long. Now, I don't know if that's what stopped it from processing or not, but I took them out. So, this is a second try on redoing this video because, uh, video because it wouldn't process. It, it uploaded fine. Yeah, it was just fine, finished. But when it come to processing, it stalled on me. Froze me up. I waited almost 45 minutes. Mm. Hunter Biden's business associate allegedly had ties to Chinese military. Well, this doesn't uh, excite me too much. <laughs> on Wednesday, Author Alex Jolsky alleged that an ex-business associate of Hunter Biden's had ties to a Chinese military intelligence organization during their relationship. Not surprising. Jolsky, Jolsky, author of Spies and Lies, discussed Hunter Biden's shady connection with Fox News host Jesse Waters, W-A-T-T-E-R-S. He related that Chinese billionaire Yang Jiaming did business with Hunter Biden before he was arrested by Chinese authorities in 2018. The Chinese businessman, Ye Jiaming, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, I'm sorry if I'm not, uh, disappeared mysteriously several years ago. But before building his empire of oil and petroleum industries in China, he worked as an organize, organization controlled by Chinese military intelligence that specialized in political influence operations. And he appeared to maintain this connection as a businessman after he apparently left the Chinese military, explained Jolsky. And Waters, 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 maybe it's pronounced different because it's not Waters, it's W-A-T-T-E-R-S. It, to me it would be Waters. Pressed uh, Jolsky on the possibility of Ye being a Chinese spy at the time. That's what it would appear to suggest that Hunter Biden had a financial relationship with this Chinese businessman with a shady, murky, military background, Josie replied. And Waters, waiters, then asked Josie how successful Ye, Y-E, that's it, was at infiltrating and influencing the Biden family. There's a thought. It's too early to say, but I think it's really concerning piece of information that we should be watching. Joski responded, that should be more investigations into this. I agree. I think it's great to see more mainstream media actually picking up on this story after years of not really following it through, he continued. We're seeing more and more information come out in particular about Hunter Biden's connections to this businessman. Uh, my little dog, uh, Chrissy, she's just uh, coughing. <laughs> she's been out in that cold air to the potty and <laughs> she's got some cold air in her lungs. She's coughing. Um, the claims by Joski come as rumors continue to circulate about the results of the Hunter Biden investigation. According to a former official, the Justice Department is still investigating Hunter Biden for possible tax violations, illegal foreign lobbying, lobbying, lob, lobbying, lobbying, and false statements involving a gun purchase and the outcome of a case in imminent. Imminent. Um, I did a deal on his uh, 
lying on that uh, form to buy a gun. He lied about being on drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In December 2020, it came to light that Hunter Biden was the subject of grand jury investigation. Just weeks after his father won the presidential election in 2020, Hunter Biden released a statement regarding the investigation of his tax affairs. I take this matter very seriously, but I am confident that a professional and objective review of these matters will demonstrate that I handled my affairs legally and appropriately, including the benefit of professional tax advisors, he stated. President Joe Biden recently acknowledged in an interview that Hunter had admitted to lying on a gun application by answering the negative question asked if he was under the influence of alcohol and drugs. I did a video on that. Yeah. Well, he has for the past two years um, been clean. He's cleaned up his act and he's getting his affairs in order and uh, President Biden's very proud of his son for coming as far as he has. Mm-hmm. So, that's nice. All right, now let's see here what else I've got. I'm not going to do any more on abortions. No, I really don't. Uh, I just don't want to do it. No, I just don't. It's uh, a very sad situation. The only thing I can say, if, it, if the mother's life for some reason is in danger, and she does become pregnant and they think it's better uh, to do an abortion on her health status um, that if she's missed her menstrual for 30 days she's gone into the next month within the next week I would get a pregnancy test or get to my doctor and do the abortion before that little heart starts to beat. And that's all I'm going to say. Let's go up here. Uh, let's try this one. I still got a couple minutes here. Hopefully this won't be too long. <clears throat> uh, U.S. banks send millions to Democrat midterm campaigns. <laughs> I wish they send millions to us. Wouldn't that be nice? Biden doesn't seem to want to help or anybody else. Not in the state of Iowa. A lot of the states have helped their people, but not Iowa. No. They're just uh, pacifying us with food stamps, which is awesome. But they feel that the seniors already get a monthly check from Social Security, SSI. They've got Medicare. they got Medicaid. You know, and other medical programs so they feel that we just don't need any more well that's not true that is not a bit true we need some money we need some money help it would solve a lot and a lot of problems and spending money they're talking about spending your stimulus and and spending uh, your money and all this kind of money senior citizens don't have any money to spend how can we re rebuild the economy, help the stores make their meat of their um, every monthly gross that they've got to take in to pay for their overhead, their workers, whatever, you know? We don't have any money, we can't spend any, so how are we going to rebuild the community back up again? I mean, I must be way off here, or I'm dingy or something. <laughs> Oh, well, I've been told I'm indignant by my kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever. According to a study done by Reuters of data provided by the Center for Responsive Pol Politics and over a half a dozen industries, leaders, and lobbyists, it has been found that financial institutions in the United States are providing far less money to federal candidates during this election cycle. But they're sending them millions? <laughs> At the same time, the share of their donations that are going to Democrat candidates has increased. I would think so. They're shelling out a million here and a million there. According to analysts conducted by Reuters, with less than a month to go until the midterm elections, this will decide control of Congress, commercial banks, 
political action committees and PACs uh, have given approximately 7.4 million to federal candidates. This figure represents a decrease of 43%, which compared to the 2020 election cycle, and a decrease of 39% uh, when compared to the average election spent over the previous decade. After the financial crisis had occurred between 2007 and 2009, when Democrats began cracking down on financial institutions, leaders have traditionally sought to Republicans who are sym sympathetic toward business uh, for help in Congress. Despite the fact that they are receiving less money overall, Democrats have boosted their piece of the pie to 40% in this election cycle, which is their largest proportion since the cycle of 2010. Also compared to 6 in 2020, 3 in 2018, and 1 ahead of the 2016 election, 10 of the top 20 congress congregational uh, recipients of bank pack money this cycle are Democrats. <laughs> this is a change from the previous three cycles. The data used by CRP comes from information that was made public by the Federal Election Commission as of September 22nd. The change in donation patterns demonstrate how financial institutions are reevaluating their Loyal loyalties in light of the heightened political partnership. The attack on the United States Capitol that took place on January 6th of 21, in which followers of Republican former President Donald Trump used a force to stop Congress from recognizing Democratic President Joe Biden's election win, was a significant turning point in the conflict. After a few hours, 147 Republicans voted to invalidate Biden's victory, which Trump had falsely asserted was tainted by fraud during the election. Well, <clears throat> it also shows that, that the sector is attempting to attract more Democrats in light of the fact that Republicans are growing furious with leaders for their support of what Republicans consider to be liberal issues. Mm, pardon me. According to James Ballantyne, Ballantyne, CEO of Government Relations uh, firm Ballantyne Strategies, and until April, a prominent lobbyist for the American Bankers Association, which controls the largest business PAC, PAC, vote on the election really prompted people to open their eyes a little bit more, he said. According to Ballantyne and other sources, the party that is currently in power often experiences an increase in donations and banks are also expanding their bets in anticipation of the race being more competitive. According to a poll tracking website, 538.com, I've never heard of that, 538.com, uppercase F, uppercase T, uppercase E, 538.com. The Republicans have a 70% probability of winning control of the House of Representatives, whilst the Democrats are the odds-on favorites to maintain control of the Senate. According to the sources, since January 6th, several leading institutions have been under to criticize or under criticism from employees who provided funding for the PACs to restrict contributions to Republicans. The decision made by a number of financial institutions, including J.P. Morgan, Chase, City Group, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, to halt some or all of their political action committee, PAC, political action committee, donations while they evaluate their strategies is likely one factor that contributed to the general decrease in spending. Well, somebody's got to put a halt somewhere. For the first time in more than a decade, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley have each made more contributions to the Democratic Party than they have in the Republican Party so far during the election cycle. The donations made by Citibank or Citigroup are for the first time distributed evenly. Although J.P. Morgan is still contributing more money to Republican candidates, the gap between their contributions is narrower than it has been in over a decade, 
When asked for a comment, the representatives from the banks either refused to do so or did not react to the quarries. According to the multiple sources, leaders are facing pressure not only from their personal but also from their shareholders to support parliamentarians engaged on topics beyond the realm of finance. This causes include solving the racial wealth disparity in education. Joyce Beatty, for instance, who chairs the Subcommittee on Diversity and Inclusion for the House Financial Services Panel, is the top Democrat congregational receiver of money from Bank Political Action Committees, PAC. Diversity, <clears throat> diversity and inclusion is an issue that banks have vocally championed. The trend combined with the decision made by some banks uh, to not work with election objectors has resulted in the financial industry having fewer Republican allies overall. This dyma dynamic was on display when the chief executive officers of the nation's largest banks testified in front of Congress a month ago. They were criticized by several Republicans for their business practices, namely their dealings with gun manufacturers and their operations in China. According to Brian Gardner, uh, Chief Washington Policy Strategist at Stifle Financial Corp., it is a tough area to find out who your allies are. Or, as the situation now stands, I believe that the time has passed, biggest banks could count on Republicans for some sort of defense. Those days are done, the Speaker said. Despite this, financial institutions continue to court Republicans. Republicans make up nine of the top ten receivers of donations from the sector. One of these recipients, Representative Patrick McHenry, is in line to chair the House Finance Panel in the event that Republicans reclaim control of that chamber. The spokespersons for Beatty and McHenry did not reply to request for comment when they were given the opportunity to do so. Camden Fine, a former, former chairman, trade group, the Independent Community Bankers of America, current political strategist, stated that banks that are active givers to political campaigns are diversifying their risk. Seating is a summary of an article that originally appeared on Newsmax. Well, my goodness, that was a very lengthy article, but very uh, information uh, loaded. Yes, very nice. But um, my goodness, <laughs> the banks are shoving over millions and millions of dollars to which which one? <laughs> the Republicans or the Democrats? Uh, now, I have to sit here and wonder, uh, are they still going to keep doing that with the way Biden has put this country in the situation that it's in? I mean, good gravy, Gertie. <laughs> I don't know. You know me. Well, this has been very long. So I'll be back. God bless you. And you are, you are a blessing. If you like my video, please subscribe. Press that like button. Be right back. Bye.